Okay, good morning. This is Bernard Nomberg with another episode of Nomberg Law Live. I come to you every Tuesday at 10 o'clock Central, 8 a.m. Pacific, and I want to welcome my guest today, Randy Householder. Good morning, Randy. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. How are you doing today? Doing great. Good, good. Things have they have they heated up in the Montgomery area today, or are we headed there? Oh, I'm sure we're headed there. It is definitely summer. We're in the middle of the heat and humidity. It is, it is. But guys, I, I'm coming to you today. We're going to talk about hiking and being outdoors in Alabama. And Randy is the admin of a couple of Facebook groups, most notably Alabama Outdoors Adventure Facebook group. And, the, and tell me the other one again, Randy. Uh, we have the Alabama Hiking Club. Alabama which, uh, Hiking Club. And Randy's been the admin and, and of these groups for a while and an avid outdoorsman and hiking and oh there's so many great things we're going to talk about today but randy before we dive into that tell us a little bit about the organizations how people can find them and then we'll uh, we'll just go from there sure i created a alabama outdoor adventure about four years ago uh, just out of the need that enjoyed the outdoors like i did that wanted to out and hike rock climb, mountain bike. Uh, I mean, we have people that enjoy all outdoor activities from kayaking, like I said, to rock climbing. And I was looking for people to enjoy those activities with. So I started that group about four years ago and we're up to over 5,000 members now. Oh, that's so awesome. It's, it is a great place to get out there and not only share your adventures, but ask others to join in with you on some of yours. So uh, it's a neat place uh, if you're trying to get ideas on what to do, where to go, or ask questions. Uh, to give you an example, I was looking to swap over from using a down sleeping bag to a down quilt. So I'm not an expert by no means in every aspect of outdoors, so I posted that in our group. And within 30 minutes, I had 10 to 15 responses about various down quilts to use while backpacking. Uh, and links on where to order them and look at the specs, such as the weight and the temperature rating and so forth. So, I mean, it's a great way to get the information to enjoy the outdoors. And again, the Alabama Hiking Club, uh, which is uh, the admin there, Vince Smallwood, is a great group. We actually co-host a lot of events together where we'll do day hikes or backpacking or kayaking trips. And it's really just geared to get people outdoors and enjoying the outdoors. Well, let's... Let's talk about Alabama. We're, we're blessed with so much awesome topography and, and from the, the mountains in the north to the shore in the south. I, I bet you there's not that many states that are as varied as we are within about a 400 mile north to south, or maybe a little more than that. But uh, talk to us about your knowledge about what our state has to offer in general. And then we'll start talking about certain parts of the, the state. Sure, there's there's a lot to offer. I mean, if you want to actually try and have some elevation gain to do some hiking, several places you can go to. You can go out to uh, Flag Mountain. You can go to Cheeha. If you're looking for something flat, you can go further down south. We have a lot of state parks, and that's one thing I really try and push is for people to get out there and enjoy our state parks. Um, we have uh, Gulf State Park down in Gulf Shores. A lot of paved paths out there if you want to walk, if you want to hike it, if you want to bike it. There's a lot of paved paths out there. So there's a lot. I mean, you can get out into the waterfalls. If you want to get out in Bankhead area or Sipsy uh, and get out there and hike that area, there's a lot of waterfalls, a lot of streams, a lot of creeks. So we've got a lot of diversity as far as the nature and the area that you're going to hike, kayak, bike, or whatever you're wanting to do outdoors. There's still some good climbing. If you're into rock climbing, there's some good climbing here in Alabama. We've we've also got one of the best. What do they call the uh, the little Grand Canyon, the little little river? Canyon. That's right, little river canyon. Yeah, it is yeah. a great area for both hiking and rock climbing. And aesthetically, it's one of the prettiest places I think you'll ever see in the state. At least the way the way I see it. <laughs> it is. It's it's a great area, and right now there's a lot of people that are taking a hike out to what's called the Hippie Hole there at Little River Canyon. So it's a neat little swimming area. It's a short hike off the parking lot, maybe a mile if that, uh, and you can hike down to a nice little swimming hole and you're gonna hike down into a crowd of maybe 100 people down here swimming in this swimming hole there by Little River Canyon. 
Excellent, excellent. Randy, I want to welcome some folks who have tuned in to watch us. We've got Ruth, Cece, Carol, Earl, Ginger, and Steve from different parts of the state and, and outside the state. So guys, if y'all have any questions or comments, maybe of your experiences or places that you really like around the state, throw them in the comments section and we'll we'll make sure we mention them. But I'm with Randy Householder, who is an experienced outdoorsman in Alabama, uh, helps be the admin of a couple of awesome Facebook groups that, let, let's talk a little bit more about that, about the crowdsourcing part, Randy, in these groups. And it's not just for hikers. I mean, clearly it's Alabama Outdoor Adventures. And if I want to find out information about uh, great uh, hiking trails that have little elevation or certain particulars that I want for my um, my adventure, can I get into those Facebook groups and, and ask questions? And, and what am I likely going to hear back? Oh, most definitely. I mean, the easiest way to find us is to go on Facebook and search for Alabama Outdoor Adventure. You're going to find the Facebook page and the Facebook group. Make sure you join the Facebook group so you can actually get into that community because that's what we're all about. We're about community. So we're about helping others get outdoors, answering questions and asking questions. So that's how you learn. Uh, we have a lot of people that are just getting started that have young kids, for instance, and they get out there and say, hey, where is a good place that I can hike, but it's still safe to take a four or five year old or a six year old and not have such a huge elevation gain? And when you ask those questions, I mean, within minutes, you're going to have people responding to you because there again, we do have over 5,000 members in this group. So there's a lot of people that have that experience of different locations and come, come back and give great advice on, hey, this is where you need to go. If you're looking for a swimming hole, you can go to Chiha and you can hike this trail and Chiha has a lake with an actual deck out there. They can jump off in a beach and your kids are going to have a great time. So it's great for that. Or we have people that come back and say, hey, I'm looking for a good through hike to practice before I go on a longer hike. Where can I go? And to give you an idea, uh, Chiha actually has a uh, Skyway Loop Trail, which is around 18 miles. So it's a good overnight trail. Some people break it up into two nights. Some people do it overnight. And then we have the really adventurous that try and do 18 all in one day. But uh, you're going to get that community feel of being able to go out there and ask those questions and get some pretty good feedback from some experienced hikers that are out there. It, it really is great crowdsourcing. I mean, it's and it's so quick. You're right. I, Randy, a couple of months ago, I came across a snake that scared the crap out of me on a trail and I took a picture. It sl slinked away. I posted a picture in one of those two groups and within a matter of an hour, there were 15 or 20 responses as to what type it was and whether it was dangerous and et cetera. Now there was some disagreement because it wasn't a great picture on my part, but at least <laughs> I had some good information. And, and frankly, it didn't matter to me if it was poisonous or not, I wasn't getting anywhere near it. Right. But I loved, it's still a snake. I loved, yeah, uh, I, I loved the interaction. I loved the responses because it really, it was good. It was good stuff. Um, Randy, Anybody who knows me, and I know you and I have just recently met, I love to hike. I go all over the state when I can, when time permits. Uh, and usually it's just for a day hike where I'm going to park somewhere at a trailhead, try to follow the map, go in and out however many hours or miles that I can, can take. And th th my question to you is, I'm going to assume that that's the majority of people who either are just getting into hiking or just want to get some exercise and maybe even experienced hikers, but my question or comment to you is, you still need to take some precautions and be prepared. And I want you to address that because it's very easy for people like that who may not be familiar with their territory or their trails to get in trouble pretty quickly. So share with us some ideas, some thoughts, some common sense approach and preparations that need to be taken. Sure. First off, let me do mention, there are several apps out there for your phone for finding trails. That's going to give you the rating of the trail. That's going to give you the distance of the trail. It's going to let you know whether it's an in or out or whether it's a loop trail. So one of those that I use primarily is called All Trails. And you can do a search within your app store and search for All Trails. And there are some other ones out there that are great as well, but that is one that I use. And it's easy to use. You can actually pull it up and it'll show you by GPS what's close to you. So you can be in a general area and pull up the trail and say explore, and it's going to show you various trails that are close in your area. So use that and actually get the information about the trail before you get on it. 
And you're right, most people that get in trouble on the trail are day hiking. And let me explain, the reason being is because people that are backpacking to stay overnight, you're prepared to stay overnight. So if something goes wrong, you have your food, you have your headlamp, you have your stuff to keep warm with you. So if you're a through hiker or a backpacker, you're gonna be prepared to stay overnight. Day hikers are not prepared to stay overnight. So when they happen to get off trail or they get lost, they can get in trouble pretty quick. So some of the things that I take on just about every hike, whether it's backpacking or whether it's an actual day hike, is for one, it's gonna be my cell phone with the all trails map on there so I can actually find and track myself via GPS. Two, I'm gonna have a backup battery for my phone so I can actually recharge my phone. I'm gonna have a headlamp in case I get stuck there when it gets dark. I've been on day hikes where I stayed out a little bit longer than I expected and had to hike back out in the evening much easier to have a headlamp to do it at night. Um, you're gonna to wanna to have possibly a water filter. I saw your mini water filter is tiny, it'll fit right in your backpack, and it will normally screw right on the top of a smart water bottle. So if you get in trouble and you run out of water and you're starting to get dehydrated, you can find a creek, fill your bottle full of dirty water, screw the actual saw your mini right on top of that water bottle, and you can drink clean water, filtered water. So those are just some things that you're going to want to have, I mean, so you can stay safe. You know, if you're on that day hike and you get lost or you spend a little bit longer at the overlook than you thought you were, and you're having to walk out at night, you're going to want a few of those items that somebody's going to pack in, you know, as if they're a backpacker. And for those who are doing these these day hikes, this is not a big backpack you're talking about. It could be a oh, waste God. pouch. Or a, a miniature, I have a, a North Face little miniature pack that I'll have a few items, you know, Band-Aids and like that, that I just put on my shoulder. You never even know that it's there. But it really, speaking from experience, I, I shared with you when I got lost at Tannehill that one time, if I'd have had a lamp or a backup battery, I'd have been in much better shape uh, as opposed to what I ended up dealing with and trying to hike out of there, you know, way after dark in a place I didn't know where, where I was. Right. Uh, and it happens a, a lot. I mean, there was a gentleman that got lost in the uh, Sipsi Bankhead uh, National Forest area, and he had to spend a couple nights out, and they did eventually find him on the trail. But um, so I said, be, be prepared, whether you're doing a day hike or whether you're doing a actually overnight backpacking trip. Be prepared to stay the night just in case. Randy, let's talk about the difference between a guided, and this may be obvious to, to most folks, but I still want it to address it a guided hike or a guided adventure versus one that you create and do yourself. Uh, let's talk about the guides and what they offer to people and, and what to, to be expected. Yeah, if you're a beginner, whether it is a day hike or an actual overnight backpacking trip, I would recommend getting with a group such as Alabama Outdoor Adventure or Alabama Hiking Club. Make sure and look this one up as well. We have links within our group to connect you to the other group as well, because we do co-host a lot of events together. So look at both groups, but a guided hike is going to give you that, you know, assurance that you're with there with somebody with some experience. Uh, if I do a guided hike, I normally have, I've got a GPS two-way texting device in case there is an emergency with anybody on the trail with us. And you're going to have that kind of stuff, that equipment on a guided hike that you may not have the funds or the budget for when you're out there by yourself, you know, going on your first hike. So go with a group. Um, and we have several hikes in Alabama. We've got the Pinhoti Trail, which is over 300 miles. I think it's 335 miles to do. The Pinhoti Outdoor Center is a great group to get with if you're trying to do that hike and do a through hike or even section hike it. Get with these guys, search them out on Facebook. They got a group as well for the Pinhoti Outdoor Center. And they'll help you plan your trip. They'll help you organize it. They'll help you set up shuttle services and so forth to get you through that through hike. Don't get out there as someone new and try and do such a hike as yourself. If you're gonna do a small group hike, you know, within a state park and then you're on a page path, that's great and wonderful. But if you're gonna get out into the wilderness and you're new at this, get with a group such as ours and, and get out there with somebody that has some experience. That, that's a great thing that you just brought up, the difference between hiking in a state park where things are, should be well marked and there are park rangers, versus someone who wants to go on a unguided wilderness adventure of Absolutely. their own. That's a huge difference, uh, in my opinion. And I, I think that you're, you're, that 
comment is quite wise, and I think that the crowdsourcing in one of these Facebook groups, that if you really want to get into a, um, a, a wilderness-type adventure, I bet you you'll have lots of volunteers if it's their part of the state or area they want to go. I bet you can put together a group pretty quickly uh, to go into whatever adventure you want to head into. Oh, absolutely. And that's, that's what's nice about this group is you can say, hey, guys, I'm looking to go explore uh, the National Bankhead or the Talladega National Forest. Um, and you're going to have people that's going to raise their hand and speak up and say, hey, I'd like to go do that. When can we put a group together? So, and I do recommend going with groups. Don't find one individual within our Facebook group because you don't know them. So keep safety in mind. Always, you know, if you're going to go with a group that's not a guided group by one of our members or admins of the group, make sure you put a large enough group together. You know, keep, like I said, keep safety in mind. Don't just wander out in the woods with a stranger, obviously. Enthusiasm is, is one thing, but it needs to be guided in the right direction. It, it um, does. I mean, we don't get to vet every single member in our group. So, you know, keep your own safety in mind. If it is a guided group that we set the event out there, whether it's Alabama Outdoor Adventure or Alabama Hiking Club, you can feel reassured that you're going to be safe within that event. Guys, I want to welcome Brittany, Tambra, and Ginger who are joining us at times on our video discussion today. I'm with Randy Householder, and we're talking about hiking and outdoors throughout the state of Alabama. He's an admin or one of the admins for two different awesome uh, Facebook groups, and we'll put the links to those groups in our comments section so you guys can, can check them out and hopefully maybe join if you're interested. Randy, I want to talk about whether it's through those groups or other organizations that may not be in Facebook. Are there is there a calendar of events? Are there events that we can find if maybe you want to join up with others? How, how do we find those types of things, organized events? Activities? Most definitely. I would go um, to both of the groups, Alabama Outdoor Adventure and Alabama Hiking Club, because we'll put events under each one. Um, and a lot of times, if it's a day hike or if it is a you know a one day kayaking trip, something like that, they're not scheduled months in advance. It's going to be kind of a on the fly. Hey guys, this weekend we're going to do this, and then we'll create that event. So if you don't see a lot of stuff out there, just be patient and watch for it. Uh, we'll put it in the down on the wall under the group so you'll see it as it comes up. If it's a backpacking trip that we're scheduling and planning out in advance, you'll normally see those first under the events because it takes a little more planning to have one of those put together. But if it's a day hike or a kayaking trip, those are normally only about a week in advance. So we'll put it out there and say, hey, this coming weekend, we're going to do this for anybody that would like to join us. And some of the ones we have to limit the number of people. I've done a guided trip out at uh, McDill Point there at Chiha. Uh, and we didn't put a limit. We only had 28 people show up to do this hike. So we looked like a train on the trail yep. going through with 28 people. It was great. Wow. Everybody had a wonderful time. Uh, we had walkie-talkies at the front and the back of the train there going down the trail. Cool. So uh, it was nice, but sometimes we do have to limit the number of people just to keep safety in mind. But yeah, well, go to those two groups and check out the events. Yeah, and I guess, you know, with a group that large or when you're organizing these things, you never know the skill level, the athleticism, the, the physical conditioning of the different people who are joining. So I guess you really got to take all those things into consideration as, as well. You do. And under the event, we'll really try and give enough information so you can make an educated call on whether you're going to be prepared or in, you know, the physical fitness ability to go out there and do, you know, what we're going to be doing. So if it's going to be a high elevation gain, then, you know, we're going to put that information. So we're going to rate the hike, whether it's just going to be, you know, strenuous or fair or easy. So just be true to yourself when you go out there, right. because there's a lot of people that think strenuous, they're in there and they're ready for it and they get out there and they're not prepared. So know your own physical ability when you get out there. One, one of the more unique things I think that Alabama offers uh, is that the Dismal's Canyon, the the worms. Talk yeah, about call that. That's right. And if you want to stay in one of those cabins, you can't just call the week of because those are typically booked weeks, if not months out. But I want you to talk about that area a little bit. 
It's a neat area. I have done the actual night tour there uh, at Dismal Canyons and saw the Dismal Lights, as they call it, uh, the little glow larvae. I believe they're from flies, if I remember correctly. Um, and it's pretty neat. So, I mean, you've got a nice tour guide that's going to walk you through. Uh, if you go out there during the daytime, I mean, you can hike as you wish. But uh, it's really a neat area, and there's only so many locations that has this particular creature that's going to glow at night. It's not like a, uh, you know, a firefly or something like that that you would see. This is crawling on the canyon wall, and you can see these tiny little glow specks. So it's it's a neat adventure. And I took one of my daughters and I went about earlier this spring. And if you guys haven't been to that canyon, to Dismal's Canyon, it really is a cool, cool little hike. It's a, it's a high canyon. It's very narrow, lots of water. But it's it's real well worth your time, and we ate at the little restaurant right there. I know there's a couple of cabins, but uh, it's it's a pretty cool day trip for at least for us. Randy, let's let's kind of pivot just a little bit, and and I appreciate your time. We're we're getting toward the end of our our conversation today, but I want to talk about I want to highlight certain parts of the state, certain parks, certain areas that maybe a lot of people don't know about. Um, it, it, with all your experiences, if you would just share with us some of the highlights, some of the places that you might recommend, whether you're experienced or not, whether you're by yourself or with a family, doesn't matter. Where are some of the more unique places that you've found? There's really a lot in Alabama. So, I mean, you can start at the top in Monsanto State Park there near Huntsville. Great place to get out and hike. Um, Chiha around the Talladega National Forest happens to be one of my favorite places to hike. But let me tell people, when you go to Ch Chiha, most people think you've got the one loop that's around the state park. And there's a few little trails out there that's in the actual state park that you can do in and out trails, such as to Pulpit Rock, which is a beautiful overlook, or to Bald Rock, which has a nice wooden walkway all the way out to the overlook. Those are great, but you're not really going to find your nice trails in that state park. You're going to have to get out into the Talladega National Forest. So you can park at the what's called Turnip Sea parking lot. Uh, there's actually a small little campground back in behind the parking lot. But you can hike down to Chiha Falls on the Chinope Silent Trail. From that same trail, you can hike all the way to Devil's Den, which is over by Chinope Lake. So you can hit two waterfalls right there on that one trail that is also part of that 18-mile Skyway Loop Trail that I was referring to earlier. So there's a lot of trails. You can hike uh, McDill Point starting from the Chiha Trailhead, which is also outside of Chiha State, you know, National Park, or the State Park. So get outside of the State Park some and get into the Talladega National Forest and look up those trail systems. Uh, we mentioned um, Bankhead National Forest, Sipsi area, a lot of trails out there. But let me actually recommend that you go out with someone that has experienced. The trails are not well marked. Uh, they're numbered. A lot of times you'll find yourself following a trail and you realize that this is an animal trail that the wild hogs have created and wasn't man-made. And then you have to backtrack two miles to get yourself back on the trail. So Sipsi is beautiful. A lot of waterfalls out there. Highly recommend it because you're going to feel like you're in a different part of the country when you get out there in the national you know, Bankhead National Forest into the Sipsi area. Randy, uh, let me let me comment real quick. I want to make sure that people understand you can be in the best physical shape. You can run miles. You could have an awesome heart rate. But if you're not an experienced person in being outdoors and dealing with the wilderness and reading maps and those kind of things, you can get yourself in trouble pretty quickly. And can. I just I want to make sure that people who are watching this don't just assume because you're enthusiastic and have very good vital signs that you don't need to know a little bit about what you're doing and where you're going. So please do some homework before you get out there and explore. But I want to want to go back. I didn't mean to really interrupt you, but that was just something that I wanted to make sure that we talked about. Um, if I'm not going to Sipsi or Bankhead, where else am I gonna? going to hit for some good outdoor adventures. I mean, if you're wanting to just get out and do some day hikes, Oak Mountain there in Birmingham is a great state park. Uh, get out there and hike. You know, the, the thing is, it starts somewhere. 
find you a loop, which is going to be easier, find you a loop where you can go or a quick in and out. So you're ending up at the same location that you parked and just get out there and start. So you've got Oak Mountain, uh, you've got DeSoto State Park, um, you've got um, Cherokee Rock Village up north. Uh, Nakalula Falls is a beautiful area around Gadsden. Oh, when that fall after big rains, that's a beautiful area. It's beautiful. And people make the mistake, and here's what I want people to do, is to make sure and venture out a little bit. So many people go to Nakalula Falls, and they walk to the top of the falls, and they look down and say, oh, that's so pretty. Right. There's a trail, if you'll go down into the campground area, that will actually take you down into the bottom of that ravine, and you can go up even in behind the falls. That's so, a very cool. That's a very cool visual. Step out of your comfort yeah. zone a little bit. You know, again, keep safety in mind, but a lot of times people are going to these touristy areas such as Nakalula Falls, assuming that's all there is to see, and there's so much more. Uh, there's a bridge down further down the creek if you're on the trail there up under Nakalula Falls. So some beautiful areas if you'll just get out and explore some, and that's what our group's all about, is get out there, ask some questions, find out, you know, what's in your area, and get out there and explore. Randy, about five, six miles from my office here in Birmingham is Ruffner Mountain, as you know very well. Yes. And they have an awesome nature center. They've got snakes and all kinds of animals on display, living. That It's a, a very uh, active nature center. But the hiking there, I think, is as pretty and as nice as you can find in this part of the state. And when you get to, is it called the King's Chair? I can't remember the lookout. King's Chair is at Oak Mountain. Uh, I, then I've, I've got, I'm mixing it up. There's a spot, can't remember the name of it, but when you get out to this overlook and below is the rock quarry, which you can see, I think you can see into Shelby County, you can see lots of Jefferson mm -hmm. County, and it's just aesthetically as pretty a place. Uh, and it's only, you know, 10 minutes from my office, so I frequently get over there. And with fall around the corner, I tell you, it's going to be the time you get out there to Cheha, some of those overlooks, um, Flag Mountain, which is around the Clanton area, Lake Mitchell area. Get out there to some of these places that have some elevation in the fall when those leaves are changing. And oh, it's just gorgeous scenery. Just beautiful. And we, we've talked lots about getting outdoors and hiking, but I don't want to, as we get close to the end, I want to talk for just a minute or so about getting on the waterways in Alabama. And, sure. and, and trips, and because I've had friends, as you and I have talked about, have gone from north of Tuscaloosa all the way to Mobile on multi-day guided trips. Mm -hmm. so share, share just a little bit of highlights about what we offer in the state. Sure. We Tunk, Alabama, you have the Coosa River. Uh, I go out there with the Coosa Outdoor Center a lot on the weekend and go down the Coosa River, go through Moccasin Gap, which I believe is a Class 3 rapid there at Moccasin Gap. So that is a beautiful place to go. We have several places. You've got um, Bear Creek, which is up around the Jasper area. Uh, that's a beautiful place. Uh, I don't remember the name of the outfitter. I have my own kayak, so I don't normally use an outfitter. Uh, so that does make it convenient. And we'll do self shuttles. So if you get with us and you go on one of our kayaking trips, we'll normally do a self shuttle. If you have to rent, that's great. You know, and we have extra kayaks sometimes as well with some people that have more than one. But uh, right now is really what I've jumped over to during the heat and the humidity of the Alabama summers is getting on the water. Uh, I recently did a section on the Tallapoosa River to look at the lilies, which I mean, oh wow, the Cahaba lilies. So that's another place at the Cahaba River. So there's a lot of places to get out in Alabama and do some great kayaking. Now our group, we do venture out. Uh, we don't always stay in Alabama. So we have gone down and we have done the uh, Blackwater down in Florida. We've done the Perdido River there on the state line. And we've done overnight trips on those. So that is nice. So you can actually take your tent, pull up on the sandbar, set up a tent, build a nice little bonfire there on the beach and camp for the night, cook your dinner and get up the next morning and kayak another 10 or 12 miles, you know, and get out for the day. So there's a lot of kayaking in Alabama, whether you're wanting to try and do some mild white water to just some flat water paddling and enjoy the scenery. All, all good stuff. Randy, I, I can't thank you enough for spending some time and, and sharing your knowledge and, and what we have in Alabama that offers for, for those who want to get outdoors.
Oh, most definitely. I appreciate you having me. Again, I mean, to continue on and to ask questions, get in these groups, get in Alabama Outdoor Adventure, or get in the Alabama Hiking Club. If you're looking to kayak the Coosa, get with the Coosa Outdoor Center. So just get involved, get out and ask questions, uh, learn and get with a group and get outdoors. Couldn't said it any better, guys. I've been talking with Randy Householder. We've been talking about getting outdoors, hiking and, and canoeing, kayaking, whatever it is in the state of Alabama. We've We've, we've got so much of it all through the state. I'm going to put the links to those Facebook groups in our comment section. If you, if you don't have the answers, you can get them in those two places. But Randy, thank you again for your time. And this will do it for today. Guys, we, uh, as we try to do, every Tuesday, 10 o'clock Central, 8 a.m. Pacific, Nomberg Law Live. You guys have a great rest of your week. Take care. <laughs>